Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today I have another entry in our mini-series on mini-PCs. Now, this is interesting because this is brand new, as you can tell. So, I was contacted to ask if I wanted a review sample of one of these, and I said yes, I'm really happy to bring it to you. So, full disclosure, this was provided as a sample for me to look at and examine and poke and prod and all that good stuff. I did not pay for this, however, I am not being paid or receiving any financial compensation beyond the device that you see in front of you to produce this video. So my opinions, my conclusions, and everything else remain objective and my own. So Geekom is a very small company that essentially makes three things at this very moment. They make this, which is the IT8 mini PC. They make a keyboard and mouse combo. And so what this unit is, is essentially a mini PC that has a 2018 laptop grade Intel 8th generation i5 CPU in it. These retail for about 550 US dollars and come decently spec'd at that price. So the specs are as follows. It is an i5-8259U, and that has the Intel Iris Plus graphics 655. Now that's significant because that can drive quite a few 4K displays, four according to their website, and has better performance than the UHD 620 series that we often see integrated in many other laptops. Bluetooth 4.2 and dual band Wi-Fi come standard, and up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM is possible inside one of these units. This unit has been configured with 16 gigabytes. There is also room for one M.2 SATA drive as well as a 2.5 inch SATA drive. No mention of NVMe. This specific unit has been configured with a 512 PCIe SSD. Now one of the neat things about these is other than the fact that they're very small and cram an awful lot of gear inside is that they're actually relatively energy efficient. 8.9 watts is about what they draw idle and because of its size it is base amount capable. But enough of the specifications, let's go ahead and open this up and see what we get inside the box. So we're going to go ahead and slit the plastic cover on the back. Now that we have the plastic removed, let's open the box and see what we get on the inside. And we get the computer. That's it right there. Uh, I think some of their marketing material says you could fit that in a jacket pocket. You totally could. <laughs> At least that part anyway. We've got some foam and coverage. That includes a carrying bag, which is, I guess, a nice little touch if you're worried about getting it scratched up. We have a power supply, a HDMI cable, the other part of the power supply, some screws, and the VESA mount kit, uh, which is a really nice touch to throw in the box. So if you do have a VESA capable monitor, you could screw that to the back and you could mount this thing. And we've got a really nice instruction booklet here that really shows you all of the uh, tricks of the trade on how you would open this up, how you would service it, the components, uh, diagrams there, how to install the VESA amount, uh, and of course a detailed explanation of the ports. And then, yeah, this just finishes off how you obviously plug everything in. And it is written in multiple languages, which is great to see, and in color. Let's uh, organize our desk a little bit here and take a real close look at the device itself. All right, with everything laid out, we'll go ahead and uh, just take this out of the packaging. And we can see that there's some protective covers on it. On the front here, we have the power button, the headphone microphone combo jack, USB 3.0, a USB Type-C super speed port, which looks to be uh, marked with a 10. And then on the back side, we have our power supply, mini display port, ethernet, two times USB 3.0 super speed, and then a, another super speed port, which is display port capable, and then an HDMI port. So if you absolutely max this thing out, there are four places to plug in monitors. 
you obviously have your HDMI, you have USB type C here, so you can do two here. The mini display port would be three. And then you would have a theoretical fourth one if you were to tap into that port as well. On the side here, we have a full size SD card reader, which is gorgeous to see. And then on this side, we have a Kensington lock slot. So if you had this on a desk and wanted to secure it, you certainly could. All right, well, that's essentially a tour of the exterior of the machine. Let's dive in and take a look at the interior. So according to the manual, to get access to the interior of the device, we are going to need a Phillips screwdriver and remove the four screws that are located on the bottom of the unit. And these screws also double as the feet and they appear to be capped. All right, and that's just a very snug fit on the bottom. And we do have a ribbon cable awaiting there. So we need to be careful when we're pulling this out. And there is a lot going on. So as you can see here, we have the ribbon cable that's going to the two and a half inch SATA bay. And that just flips over like that. And we can see that part of the heat sink for the SSD is located here as well. And then looking at the inside of the guts of this thing, we see that we've got a Kingston branded SSD here. And then of course we have the two RAM slots and we also have Kingston RAM there. So one stick of 16, which is nice to see that they didn't split it into two sticks of eight. Uh, so we have essentially all the area and space that we would need to do the last upgrade uh, possible for a unit like this. So to disassemble this, we're going to reach in there, grab the tabs on either side and remove that ribbon cable so we don't risk breaking it. Removal of the RAM is trivial. We just reach in and eject that. Removal of the SSD is simply one screw here. We spin that out and can remove the drive. And we do have our Wi-Fi card. I am gonna reassemble this and then put this thing through its paces. I have a couple of ideas of what I could do with this, um, but I have to say in terms of compact design, uh, this is pretty darn neat, especially for what it is capable of. So at this point, I'll cut to a probably a few weeks later and then I will give you my conclusions on what I think of this Geekom IT8 PC. All right, so what I have actually done is I've been using this for about a week in my film space, and it's actually really, really handy to have a device like this with so much power in about a one liter box that you can really put anywhere in your home. The fact that it has the built-in Wi-Fi is actually a game changer because even though it does have Ethernet on the back along with several other ports as we've discussed earlier, I don't need to worry about where this goes. I'm going to get good internet speeds from this device no matter where I put it. And that leads me to probably my only major criticism of this device and that is the cooling solution. Now, the cooling solution works perfectly fine, but it can be a little loud. So under heavy load, I got this thing to spin its fan at around 60 decibels. Now, 60 decibels is not exceptionally loud for a laptop, but it is rather loud these days for a desktop PC. Now, the CPU inside of this, of course, is more laptop grade, but this is being pushed into a desktop environment. Now, there are ways to mitigate that, of course, and realistically, having this under heavy load is only really going to happen when you're doing like project renders, uh, you know, system updates, really, really intensive tasks. All right, I'm gonna interrupt myself, which is weird. And I actually heard back from Geekom about the fan noise issue, and apparently, they actually have a flash program here that should reduce the fan noise. So what we're going to do is we're going to install that flash program and see if it makes any appreciable difference on the fan speed and the fan noise that we get when the system is under load. All right, we have the USB drive with the flash uh, program in. And what the instructions say that we have to do 
is we're going to start this thing and we're going to hit F7 continuously during the, the splash screen here. Okay, there we go. And we are going to uh, select the USB disk here. And this is, of course, the flash. Um, and the erase verify is going. Programming. And as far as I can tell, that's done. And I have my sound meter here. Wow. <laughs> that makes a significant difference. So there is still some fan noise when this thing is under load. But we're talking about like a, a 10 decibel drop. So that is good to see. Uh, temperatures are looking good here. Just pulling up open hardware monitor. And things are looking pretty healthy here. That software tweak is, uh, to me, something that you would want to do after buying one of these things if you are particularly concerned about fan noise. But thankfully, Geekom has provided a fix. And the fix is quite satisfactory. Overall, at the value uh, that they are offering in this, the fact that you can put two SSDs in there, it's got Wi-Fi, it can support up to four displays, the price point, I think, is actually rather fair, and the build quality is really good. The cooling solution, of course, is completely the result of the form factor, and I think that's something that, if you are looking to buy one of these small form factor mini PCs, you'll be well aware of. At any rate, Let's go ahead and wrap up this video. I will be leaving a few links in the description down below if you are interested in picking one of these things up for yourself. And as always, I would encourage you to do the big four. So please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so the next time I have the opportunity to feature a small PC like this, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.